Did you know that David and Goliath isn't the only story of a massive victory against incredible odds in the Bible? Hey, have you ever heard of Gideon? Welcome to Mornings with Bishop Robert. Thanks for joining me. You know, you're always welcome here. My goal is to introduce people to the Jesus they never knew, and then help them get to know him and his word personally and better. So if our time together today speaks to your heart, let me invite you to like, subscribe, and also share this with a friend. Well, in my personal devotional time this morning, I read about one of the great acts of faith in the Bible, Gideon's battle against the, the massive armies of the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the other rites <laughs> and all the sons of the East. Well, maybe you know the story. But in order to keep the nation of Israel in subjugation, these armies repeatedly invaded the land to, to ravish it, killing flocks and herds and taking crops. The book of Judges tells us that whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites and the Amalekites and other Eastern peoples invaded Israel and they didn't spare a living thing for Israel, neither sheep, nor cattle, nor donkeys. They came up with their livestock and their camels, trampling the crops. There were so many of them, they were impossible to count. So a, a poor and starving nation of Israel <laughs> finally wises up, turns from the sinful ways that had gotten them into this mess in the first place, and once again calls out to God for deliverance. And once again, God hears their cries and decides to redeem them. So for, for this massive task, God chooses an absolute nobody in Israel. The least of the least. Uh, this guy, Gideon, he came from the half-tribe of Manasseh. <laughs> Did you catch that? Not even a tribe, only a half-tribe. Gideon's clan was the weakest of the bunch. And he was the least in his family. But God called Gideon. And Gideon became convinced that God was serious. Here's the key. Gideon decided to act on his faith. It, it's an amazing story. It, it's recounted for us in the Old Testament book of Judges, in chapters 6 and 7, if you want to go read them. But Gideon gathers together an army of some 32,000 men. And they set out to fight an army that had at least 100,000 more warriors than that. I'll never understand how this nobody, without a military background, ever convinced 30,000 guys to come pick a fight where they were dramatically outnumbered. But to make matters worse, while Gideon is worrying about how few men he has. God tells him he has too many. And 22,000 guys get sent back home. And as Gideon is watching them march away, God tells him there are still too many men. So God says he will thin them out for Gideon. <laughs> uh, gee, thank you, God. Well, as many of you know, God leaves Gideon with 300 men and tells him it's time to go to war. So Gideon gathers these 300 guys together and explains the battle strategy. You're going to love this. He tells them, watch me do exactly what I do. And when I blow the trumpet, blow the oar trumpet and shout the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Huh. Great military strategy, Gideon. Start the fight by holding torches so they can see exactly where we are. And blowing trumpets 
which of course will eliminate any element of surprise, and then shouting about swords, which we don't have. <laughs> oh yeah, great idea, Gideon. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Have you been there? I mean, Gideon was hopelessly outnumbered, ridiculously under-resourced, utterly unprepared. And God had sent them to war. But he hadn't sent any weapons with them. When you're facing that kind of a situation, you only have two choices. You can either moan to God about how big your problems are, or you could shout at the problems and tell them how big your God is. You see, unbelief puts circumstances between us and God. But faith puts God between us and our circumstances. Gideon told his men to shout and declare the glory of God. Today's verse says, Behold, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Friends, faith is taking what God has given you. The kingdom of heaven is forcefully advancing, and the forceful take hold of it. Gideon did. When Gideon and his army of 300 shined their lights and shouted their battle cry, God caused their enemies to turn upon themselves and attack themselves. Then the army of Midian fled with the army of Gideon in hot pursuit. And when the battle was done, 135,000 enemy soldiers lay dead. And not one Israelite had been slain. Lesson this morning is that faith acts. It's the tested faith that can be trusted to endure. Untested faith is 97% imagination. Faith isn't faith until you do something about it. Now, any step of faith can be, said, be considered a foolish risk at some point. Courage isn't the absence of fear. It's the judgment that something greater than fear is more significant and worthy of the potential sacrifice. It's been said the brave don't live forever, <laughs> but cowards don't live at all. Yesterday, I asked you what you'd undertake if you knew you couldn't fail. Today's question is a little bit different. What are you willing to step into if the only way you're going to make it is if God steps in? Faith acts. It's time to act on your faith. Before you do, I want to ask you to help me introduce people to the Jesus they never knew. And help them get to know him and his word personally and better. So first thing, please like this video. Because that's going to help more people see it. Then click follow or subscribe so that you and I, we can get together every single day. If you click the link in the description, you'll get a free copy of my book, Count to One, dropped right in your inbox. I spent a little bit more time on Gideon in here too. One final thing. Do share this video with a friend. Because as you do, that puts you on the team of folks that are fighting this fight and sharing the love of Christ all over the world. Thanks for helping.